Welcome back guys, more chess. First of all you see I have another victory. Yeah, he just overstepped the time after my first move, so kind of stupid. And I also have to say that I'm low on time in most of the games here. And I was low on time, well, two days ago. And I had to make a move via the smartphone because... I forgot to to record, so for example in this game I think we stopped over here, I played queen e2 and after knight g4 I just took this pawn so I had to take with the queen, so no big deal I think. Now this knight is attacking nothing at the moment, I mean nothing important, but I can think about putting my bishop on e4. But I think he will just go queen d7. And then I do not have any knight e5 shenanigans because he can just take it. And if I take the bishop, he can take with his queen, and it's just a massive trade. Although he's one more time on e5. So I will just put this knight back, or push this knight back. Okay, d3, let's take a look. He, what is this guy doing? Why is he sacrificing this knight on g5? I don't have a clue. If I take bishop takes, this can't be that good. I mean, I can just take this knight then. Was he worried about this pawn? I could have taken this right here, so... Knight g5 to protect this pawn is a bit very weird. I don't get it, I just take this piece now. The best I can see is bishop takes and this is ridiculous, so I'm not getting made it here, I think. Oh, what's this? If he, if he, what? <laughs> if he takes with a pawn, I'm just losing a full rook, I have to play rook d3. And you can just promote and I have to take this. Now that he takes with the rook, I probably have something like a draw, maybe even more. If he checks here, I can go to e2, rook e1, check king d3. Or I can go to g1 if he check if he checks here, then rook f1. And what is he exactly doing? I mean, some stuff is hanging here. E6 is hanging, C3 is hanging. If he takes D2, I still take C3. I'm not quite sure what he's doing. I think he just 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 blundered it. He doesn't want to have a winning game, probably. This one was also a game where I had to make a move without recording, so I just played King H2. Just to step out of any stuff on this diagonal. And also, long term, I want to push g4 maybe. Because I need to, need to make a plan here. I'm up in exchange in two pawns, but he looks very secured for the, for the time being. If I now attack this pawn, he always just have bishop c6 and I can't cross through. So what about queen f5, here's knight d4, and he's getting made it. I like to trade queen, so my, my rook is much more powerful. If I trade queens, I can most likely end on the 7th. I can bring my king further. If I trade queens, I have to keep an eye on this knight. It doesn't get too annoying on d4. But I, I kind of like queen f5. It doesn't have knight, uh, knight d4. And otherwise, I can go queen f7. If 
come let me play this move ah oh mr d blade bishop bishop a8 why ah because yeah king h2 was your was was my move okay so yeah here i grabbed this pawn which he left hanging of the queen of three he had to recapture now he wants to play f5 so i just stopped this no need to give him any counterplay and then i will bring my other rook to the second rank and start pushing my d pawn i think okay so i just took this pawn but this knight is defended for the time being so i will attack it another time and take another pawn and attack the h7 pawn it has to be good for me this has to be good you can't play knight before any other knight move because i can just take this <coughs> take this rook in the corner Okay, yeah, this is a kind of new game, so f4, I most likely play g6. And if they go e4, I transpose to a dragon, accelerated dragon, or in this case, more likely a Grand Prix attack. But I transpose to a Sicilian, let's put it this way. Yeah, and third f5, I recently read that this is, that this is even a blunder. I can take and then there are stuff with with the queen h5 and pawn takes g6 and stuff like this in the air so he can't really take on g2 and whoops and h1 okay welcome 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 well as you can see on the left hand side we have three new victories against losers he i think overstepped the time yeah time out play is notorious he overstepped the time in three games which is kind of ridiculous with a two days per move time control well in the analysis or auto analysis computer analysis on leeches you see that we basically had an advantage right in the opening of the pushed e5. It's already slightly, very slightly better for black. Which means basically equal. So the black goal is fulfilled already. And over the moves, this valuation basically increases steadily. Bishop f3, I missed the best move. Which is not knight d4, but bishop d4. The point being that this queen is just trapped. And I still wonder why I don't see something like this, but... Yeah, things happen. In another game, let's see was it this one in one game he was basically better no not this one here we just dominated him basically after move seven it's just better better for white and he's just material down i have to send the better development and so on it's just gone right off right out of the opening basically at the end plus five is is more than winning basically yeah so the last one has to be the, the game where he was winning yeah yeah no he wasn't really winning although here here right in the right at the end he was winning but it was a Grand Prix attack I usually not play e4 but when I play something like this and we had a fairly normal position I think just pushed him around bishop takes now queen e4 was the blunder the best move was queen d1 
with the idea that now knight g3 can basically always be met by bishop e1 ideas and this knight is not hitting my queen because it's on d1 which I didn't really appreciate so over here he's already no longer worse even a bit better until f5 which is also a bit weird but the real plunder I think queen takes b2 was plundered by him yeah but rook b3 is just stupid I mean I didn't really calculate this move enough I think even queen takes d8 is not really wise I could have just taken and give up the screen anyways after like something like this yeah so in this game basically this one mistake just spoiled everything I mean yeah queen e4 was inaccurate but not losing I think and apart from that we kind of really dominated the sky and then this rook b3 blunder here which was kind of stupid I mean I can just just move my knight and I'm fine I give this pawn but yeah so what still up material this knight is a beast on d6 so he has to re-sacrifice the exchange sometimes yeah, that was really stupid. And here, of course, d takes d2 is dimensioned line where I had to give back the rook basically. And he's up a piece for some pawns, but I don't think white can really hold this position. I mean, these pawns are not dangerous yet. If I get in king e4, f5 then maybe something but he has an extra pawn on the queen side and especially this extra bishop and it's just lost after after rook takes I have more or less a winning game again I mean c3 is falling and without this pawn I'm just up in exchange and one or two pawns basically but as you let his time run out. We have one anyways without showing our technique. So I opened up some new games. This one, this one, this one. Maybe even two more. I guess this one and this one. So we get back to 10 games. So let's see. What? Another time out? No. I lost on time. How is this possible? I lost this game on time. But this, this is basically impossible. I, I did every game. Should be something like this. I, pl I moved in every game at the same time. Why did I lose on time here? I mean this position is not lost I think I'm just winning I, I, I just took, took a piece I don't get it I just don't get it no, let's take a look at the analysis at least yeah but stupid things like this happen yeah so looks like he never really had even the slightest advantage. Yeah, the first two or three moves was a Sicilian, but yeah, this is ridiculous here. Yeah. And yeah, I'm already equal. After knight g5, I'm just just better, and after d3, I'm just winning. It's as easy like that. I still don't get it. I mean, yeah, who I lost. No, nothing to do. Let's see. We play some new games. Let's play d4. 
I try to 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 play d4 more often. I use these these buttons. Let's wish him good luck. What do I play against d4? Maybe something like a slav or semi-slav. Maybe again d4. I need some practice in these d4 games. So here I push this knight around a bit. No, I do not have bishop e4 anymore, but I wouldn't have gained anything anyways. So, I could think about knight f1, knight e3, and then d5 to just blast open the center. So my bishop on f4 is really good piece. I think next to will basically against anything play bishop d6 to challenge my, my nice bishop. So I should maybe think about knight e4 so that bishop d6 isn't possible and if he trades on d4 I can play bishop d4 uh, bishop e4 sorry bishop takes e4 then probably queen d7 I do not have knight e5 yet. Not yet. Hmm. I can also think about a4 breaking up this this space gaining structure. And if he plays bishop d6, yeah, so what? Then if I can take and then let's say castle. And later play b3, this, this structure becomes very vulnerable, especially b5 and c4. This is only left then. Is that kind of like a4? What else? This knight e4 stuff doesn't gain anything, I think. So queen d7. Is there anything I miss? Ah, of course. Knight e4, knight takes e4, bishop e4, queen d7, d5. Looks strong. I'm threatening, or semi threatening to take. Let's see, he plays. What can he do? Knight e7, maybe? I can take, and I'm on the queen, and he has to take back with a pawn because this bishop is undefended. This looks really nice. Knight e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, queen d7, d5, maybe knight d8 to protect this this bishop. Then I can still take one the queen, if he takes with the queen, I could take if I want. Probably I have to take. And he will trade queens, he can take with the king, he will take back. Don't get anything there, right? But I don't need to take here immediately, I can cast a queenside first. This looks very nice. Okay, so I took a pawn. I attacked his knight, so I'm up, what, two pawns? Okay, so now what? What is this knight doing? Maybe b4? I'm kind of worried about this pawn. I want to play rook b7, rook b3 and just just take this pawn. Is this possible? The rook b7, what might be his move? Knight before is not possible. If he attacks this bishop with this with, with this knight, I'm not too concerned. And this rook isn't doing anything and can't do anything really. So I play rook b7. Then let's see what he does. Okay, so we had. We have very very strong opponent. So 2100 in blitz, 2100 in correspondence only 2000 in, in classical
but really strong player. I mean, my classical rating is on this account not even mentioned because I don't play any classical on this account, but on my main account I have about 2300, but it's not very precise. I don't play or I didn't play any games in the last time, so I think he's at least on my strength. So let's play just knight c6 and then look what he does. Maybe he will play c4, maybe e4. Most likely just g3 and play the king's indian attack style game. So I will probably play g6 as well, bishop g7 and then maybe e6, maybe d6 and knight f6. Something like this. We will see. <coughs> 